Hello everyone, and welcome to another interesting geography class, where we'll be looking at a very popular island off the coast of Trinidad and Tobago. In today's class, remember to vibe as we go along this lesson. V, think about the vocabulary that we'll be going through. I, we'll be doing an interesting investigation that you can actually do at home. B, we'll be building your knowledge of geography and Trinidad and Tobago. And E, this will help you to explore the islands of Trinidad and Tobago, something you can do on your own with your parents after this class has been concluded. To begin, let's visit Casper Grande Island. Casper Grande is one of the small islands off the northwest coast of Trinidad. It forms one of the Bocas del Dragon, or the Dragon's Mouth. It is an island that is primarily limestone and reaches a height of 121 meters at its highest point. On Gaspar Grande Island, we can find the Gaspari Caves, a natural limestone cave system with a mysterious pool at its base. Other caves on the islands include the White Cave, the Brioche Cavern, and the Precipice Cavern. Using Google Earth, we can visit the cave virtually. This technology allows us to view inside of the cave without having to visit. As you can see in these pictures, the cave's floor and rocks are not very dark. This is a characteristic of limestone, which is white in color when it's in its very pure form. Inside of the cave, you can observe certain features sticking out of the ground, looking like if they were carved with water. And on the roof of the cave, you can see spikes hanging down. Stairs have been built to allow people to visit the pool and to observe the features within the cavern. The question we have today is what has caused this very beautiful cavern to be formed? The key lies in the type of rock, and that is limestone. Limestone is calcium carbonate, and calcium carbonate behaves in a very specific way when it interacts with rainwater. In the first part of this class, we will be looking at calcium carbonate and we are actually going to simulate what happens on Gaspar Grande at home in our own kitchens. Shells are made up of calcium carbonate as well. Corals, the exoskeletons, are made up of calcium carbonate as well. So if we were to source some shells, we can conduct a little experiment on them using vinegar. You can conduct this experiment at home if you like. Just remember to be safe, have adult supervision at all times, ask questions if you are unsure of anything, follow all instructions carefully, and equip yourself with good protective wear, such as gloves. Let's get started. For this investigation, we'll need a couple things. A measuring cup, a cup of vinegar, seashells, and a pair of tongs. I've already laid them out here and I'm going to take the thinnest seashell I have and put them in the cup of vinegar that I have already poured into the measuring cup. Let's observe what happens when we place it into the vinegar. Initially you may not notice any differences but soon the shell begins to produce bubbles. Let's leave it for a while and observe what happens later. Five minutes later, you can see that the shell starts producing a lot more bubbles. It's such a vigorous process that the shell itself moves around as the bubbles are released. Let's leave it for another 
hour or two and see what happens after that. Two hours later, you can see that the shell has disintegrated into many small pieces inside the vinegar. When we have a look at the shell itself, you can see tiny holes and it's even breaking apart. It's very brittle as I pick it up with the tongs. The surface of the shell has dissolved or disintegrated significantly. That experiment demonstrates something about limestone with the use of seashells. Just like limestone, seashells are made of calcium carbonate. Vinegar is a mild acid called acetic acid. We use acetic acid in our foods for different purposes. When the seashell was placed in the vinegar, the vinegar reacted with the calcium carbonate causing it to dissolve and release carbon dioxide bubbles as you saw. That's why the shell began to disintegrate and that's why you saw tiny holes develop on the surface of the shell. Limestone rocks, which are also made of calcium carbonate, have a very similar reaction to acids. Vinegar is not naturally occurring in the environment and does not fall on rocks, causing it to dissolve. However, there is another source of acid naturally occurring in the environment, and that is rainfall. So the next question we have is how does rainfall become acidic? Is all rainfall acidic? How then does rainfall become acidic? It actually has to do with carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. See, plants and animals, they naturally produce carbon dioxide through the process of respiration. All of that carbon dioxide goes into the atmosphere. However, man also releases a lot of carbon dioxide through industrial processes. Factories, cars, industries, Big cities, electricity, all release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. At the same time, evaporation and evapotranspiration are occurring, allowing water to evaporate into the atmosphere. So both carbon dioxide and water molecules are in the atmosphere at the same time. When they meet up in the atmosphere, you find that carbon dioxide will then dissolve in these water molecules. This forms a very weak acid called carbonic acid. Carbonic acid then falls to earth as precipitation. And this carbonic acid is responsible for interacting with limestone. And that's how rainfall becomes acidic. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere mixes with the water vapor. The carbon dioxide dissolves in the water, forming the weak carbonic acid, which then falls to the earth as rainfall. When the rain falls to the earth, it reacts with limestone, causing it to dissolve, just like the seashell in the vinegar. This then leads to a series of different features on the surface and below the surface of the earth, just like we saw on Gaspar Grande Island. In this next section, we will look at the surface of the earth and explain how these features are formed from limestone erosion. Before we learn about these features, we need to learn a couple terms which are important to the process of limestone erosion. They are carbonation, permeable, and calcium 
bicarbonate. Carbonation is simply the process by which limestone dissolves in rainwater. All limestone features that are formed by erosion are formed by the process of carbonation. Limestone rock is permeable. That is, it allows water to pass through it. This is very important as water will erode both the surface of the limestone and as it passes through the limestone, it also erodes below the surface of the limestone. These lead to features both on the surface and below the surface of the ground. When the acidic rain falls on the limestone and passes through the permeable limestone rock, it causes the calcium carbonate to be converted into calcium bicarbonate. That is, it changes the solid calcium carbonate limestone rock into calcium bicarbonate which dissolves in the water and is carried away. So what's the difference between calcium carbonate and calcium bicarbonate? Calcium carbonate is the solid rock which reacts with the acid and then it's converted into calcium bicarbonate which dissolves easily and is carried away. In this next section, we are going to look at the features on Gaspar Grande Island and explain how they are formed by the running rainwater both above and below the surface of the earth. Now there are many new words to learn here. So maybe you can write all of these words as you go along. Then, when you are finished with this section, you can recap this part of the video and define each of these terms. Limestone rock is permeable, meaning water can pass through it very easily. However, it also is very well jointed with many cracks and fissures. So water enters through these cracks and through the process of carbonation, they cause these cracks to become bigger as they dissolve. Eventually, you get holes in the ground called sinkholes. These sinkholes can run deep underground sometimes and even leading to cracks that run horizontally below the ground. These cracks below the ground grow as water continues to pass through them. They eventually grow and join together leading to the formation of small underground passages, which are caves. These caves eventually grow into large caverns where you can actually go and explore. So sinkholes lead to these caverns. Sometimes you have the collection of water below ground forming subterranean streams. These streams are fresh water. The spikes that you observe on the top of caves and the large mounds on the bottom are called stalactites and stalagmites. Stalactites form when water drips from the roof of the cave after it passes through the rock. The continuous dripping deposits calcium carbonate on the roof forming the spike. When it drips on the floor, it also deposits calcium carbonate on the floor. These drips form a large mound called a stalagmite. When you have a collection of several stalactites, we call this a curtain. When a stalactite grows so long and a stalagmite grows so high that they join together, it's called a pillar. These can all be observed in caves. Sometimes a sinkhole becomes so large that the entire top of the sinkhole caves in onto the cave below. This is called a doline. Ooh, that was a lot, wasn't it? Remember, if you didn't quite catch all those terms, you can pause the video, go back and recap that section, trying to remember each of those terms again. In this next section, we are going to look at photos of Gaspar Grande Island and try to identify the features based on what we've learned so far. So get your thinking caps on and let's see how many of these pictures you can identify correctly.
I have two bonus questions for you to end this class. Firstly, can you write in a single sentence, how does rainfall become acidic? And secondly, can you write in another single sentence, how does the surface and below the surface of limestone rocks dissolve in rainwater? Well done! You have answered those questions quite effectively. You have done extremely well by taking part in this very long, very complicated class. This class, you have accomplished three main things. You have investigated how calcium carbonate dissolves in acid. You have described how rainfall becomes acidic. And you have explained how carbonation leads to the formation of different limestone features. There's one more thing for us to do. And that is for you to go out and explore the island of Gaspar Grande with your family and friends. See those features for yourselves in real life. Remember, geography is not just about the physical features, but it's about how you and I interact with the environment. Thank you for watching.